Hey, what's going on everybody? Rodney Carr here and well, it's been a minute since I've made a video and I thought it was probably time for me to make another one. And I don't know about y'all, but I really think that we've lost touch with reality in this world. And the biggest thing we've lost touch with is love. And I think if we could get back the idea of what love really is, we might actually be able to fix things. It's going to be a long road. I don't know if it's going to happen in our lifetime, but it first starts with understanding what it all really means. Now there's this Bible verse or a few verses, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. It's highly quoted among believers and non-believers because they just seem to love it. It's a it's a great passage. However, there's something in it that is missed. I'm going to read it real quick and then we'll dive in. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love is not self-seeking. If you read any modern definition of love, and there's probably like 25 of them, that's an exaggeration, for sure. But there's a bunch. Nouns, verbs, a bunch of definitions of love. They all have something to do with affection. Now, everything that you read in, heard in that was some version of an action, right? Action comes from commitment. So what love is, is a decision of commitment. So with our modern way of thinking, you'll hear people say, I love ice cream. I personally don't. I can't stand ice cream. Um, but I guess most people love ice cream. If you look at it in modern terms, yeah, okay, you can love ice cream. You love the way ice cream makes you feel. You can love a movie. You loved the way that movie made you feel. You feel. That is self-serving. That's not love. Love is not an emotion. It's not an affection. If you look at love in the concept of a decision of commitment, it's not actually possible to love ice cream. You can like the way it tastes. You can like how it feels going down in your, your esophagus or, or whatever that is. You can like it. You can like it a lot. But you can't actually love it because you're not going to commit to ice cream. Love is willing the good of others. Love is a decision of commitment. And there's different levels of commitment, which means there's different levels of love. I love my wife. I am fully committed to my wife to meet all of her needs when she needs them. Am I great at it? No, probably not. You know why? I'm human, and sometimes I fall into that self-serving thing. Sometimes I fall into that feeling thing. But that's not the point. I have a responsibility. I made a commitment. And the crazy part is, the more you fulfill the responsibilities of commitment, because as soon as you have a commitment, that means you have responsibilities. As soon as you start fulfilling those responsibilities and doing it more and more and more, this weird affection starts to grow. And that's the awesome part about it because you're not having affection because of you. You're having affection because of the awesomeness that you're seeing happening with your wife. The, the happiness you're putting on her face. It's a whole different type of an affection, a whole different type of feeling that you will never get if you do not make the decision to commit and follow the responsibilities and put responsibility above feeling, responsibility above emotion. 
is in this world where feelings matter more than anything else, we can't possibly grasp the concept of what love really is. And until we can grasp that concept, then we're going to love ice cream. Yeah, you're going to commit to ice cream before your wife, before God. Because ice cream will always make you feel better. So, next time you love ice cream, think about this video. And I pray to God that someday we can start putting responsibilities and commitment above our own feelings, above our own emotions. Anyways, love y'all. Truly do. Oh, one more thing. When the Bible says, or when Jesus says, to love your enemies, that means you've committed to willing the good for your enemy. You don't have to have an affection for someone you dislike. You're not called to. You're called to make sure that you do everything you can to will the good for them. When you look at it that way, it's not that hard. Again, love y'all. Have a good day.